Hello. Thank you for joining. I am going to share my screen, so give me a second and then we'll go ahead and we will get started. We're going to talk about supporting physical development in our youngest learners. So let's get moving. My name is Bonnie Matrega and I am the Judy Center coordinator over at Magnolia Elementary School. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to let you know that this session will be recorded for future parent workshops and posted on Harford County Public Schools early childhood website. By attending this session, you have you are agreeing on the terms of your participation to be recorded. So thank you. All right, let's get started. Physical development, we all use it, but we also take it for granted. From picking up a child to placing a cell, a call on your cell phone, to walking up a flight of stairs, it takes a series of complex movements to successfully perform these tasks, things that we don't even think about. But children, they go through a developmental process as they learn to master their everyday tasks. So we are going to discuss the physical development in our youngest learners and how we can support them as they acquire the coordination to get through every, to get through tasks, to master tasks every day and everyday movement. So let's start with, well, what does it take for a simple cookie or simple cracker, something simple for our, our children to um, eat. What are the complex steps? You have to see the food, reach for the food, grasp the food, bring it to your mouth, open your mouth, put the food in your mouth, move your tongue and lips to taste the food, use their jaws, teeth, and tongue to chew the food, swallow the food. Wow, that is a lot of steps, especially when you don't think about them at all. So now you can see why we as adults take it for granted and it's important for us to be able to know what actually needs to take place so we can foster their physical movement. So today we're going to talk about well, what is physical development and we're going to talk about the different types of movement that can help. And I hope that by the end of this little workshop that you will be able to take some strategies or ideas, at least one, if not more, that you can use to help foster physical development in your youngest learner. Physical development includes the gradual gaining of control over our large and our small muscles. So throughout the session, you will hear me say large muscles, gross motor skills. Same thing. Small muscles, fine motor skills. Same thing. We all know that children grow and develop rapidly, particularly in the first five years of their life. And although they grow at different rates and they have different capabilities, they all develop according to the same pattern, to the same sequence. And that's what we want to talk about today. But before we go and discuss it farther, there is a principle known as the Cephalocaldo principle that talks about the development proceeding from the head downward. Also, simple to complex principle. This principle describes the direction of the, de de the development, growth and development. According to this principle, the child gains control of the head first, then the arms, and then the legs. Infants develops control of the head and their face movements within the first two months after birth. Within the next few months, they're able to lift themselves up by using their arms, and by six to 12 months, they are starting to gain leg control, crawling, standing, walking. It's important to know that because as we go through our next part of the workshop, you'll see. So physical development has two muscle groups that we're working on. Like I said, gross motor skills are large muscles such as sitting, crawling, jumping, walking, running, and throwing. 
our fine motors, our small muscle skills, holding, pinching, flexing fingers, and toe, toes. Good things, good, a good um, activities for the fine motor skills, Play-Doh, um, clay, helping your little one with scissors, cutting with scissors, buttoning, zipping, um, holding, uh, eating or writing utensils. I am not a big person for fat, fat um, markers or fat crayons when you have little hands. I like the little ones. I like to go to the miniature golf place and get those little pencils because it fits right here and it's easy for them to grasp instead of holding it like this. So those are great activities to practice that will build those muscles. So there's three types of movement that can help foster our large and our small muscles, our gross and our fine motor skills. The first one is the locomotor movement. This is the movement of the body from place to place. It is supports our gross motor skills development. So it's the ability to crawl, walk, hop, jump, run, leap, gallop, skip, anytime you're doing those large muscle skills, those gross motor skills. The second one is non-locomotor movement. This is the movement of the body while staying in one place. For example, pushing, pulling, twisting, turning, wiggling, sitting, rising are some examples of our non-locomotor movement. This type of movement helps to develop our balance and our coordination skills. Finally, the third one is the manipulative movement. This involves control of our hands and our feet, our toes. Opening and closing, waving, throwing, catching, like I said, buttoning, zipping, holding utensils, or even being able to, little, little guys, being able to grasp a Cheerio and um, put it in, in their mouth. These are fostering our fine motor skills and our hot and our hand eye coordination as well. All right, so with that little bit of background, how can we use the environment to promote the physical development and for our, our kids to be safe and move freely without hurting themselves? The home and child care environment should be a safe place in which children can feel confident and assured as they climb, balance, draw, hop, dance, serve themselves, clean up after themselves. And most children will practice skills they've already have as well as those that offer them to be challenged. The environment that we set up should provide many opportunities for children to use their large and small muscles while participating in everyday routines and activities. Don't hesitate to move furniture around or out of the way for children to be safe. Moving the furniture will help the children to make association with this space, with the space that's around them. It's clearly defined. This is where I can play and be safe. This is where I can't. Gives them that sense of security. We as parents and caregivers, we play a vital role into promoting our physical development in our youngest learners. So let's schedule every time, or let's schedule time every day for active play and encourage children to use their bodies and all of their senses as they play. Get into the action, don't be afraid. Participate, move your body with them. Share your interest with them. Excitement and pleasure in children's physical accomplishment. Share that with them. Also, a variety of materials and equipments that require children to use their large and small muscles um, can help enhance the environment or can help the environment to foster our physical movement or development. So give children an opportunity 
every day to go outdoors as well as to provide movement indoors. When they are outside, you have parks and playgrounds which are free. You can make things in your backyard, lightning bugs. That was one of my favorite things to do is catch lightning bugs right before it got dark, dark before I had to go to bed. What about playing tag, hopscotch? Make up your own rules. Red light, green light, be creative. We have the web now. We have technology at our fingertips. You can Google outdoor appropriate activities safe that will build our physical, foster our physical um, development in our youngest learners. Inside, you can get creative by using socks, roll them up and throw them or place them in a basket. Put beans in them to make them a little bit heavy. Again, throw them or put them in a basket or you can sort them. Create an obstacle course. You can do that in your kitchen. You can do it outside. Have them go under the table, under the chair, sit next to the couch, sit on the couch, um, hop from the bathroom to the kitchen table. Be creative. You can create an a, a, um, obstacle course outside on the, on the playground as well. Use a piece of tape, put, put a piece of tape outside. Hop from one side of the tape to the other. Skip from one side, jump from one side to the other. You can do that inside with a blanket as well. Um, you can have children move like animals, act out different animals. Snake, snakes slither across the, the, the floor. You can hop like a rabbit, hop around the, the living room. There are endless songs out there that are appropriate for children to use that that have music and movement. Dr. Jean is one of my favorite. All of her songs, there's some kind of movement that goes along with them. Her songs can just be songs that she's singing, good morning song, or a song just for fun, the Tutti Ta song. Or there could be alphabet songs songs, rhyming songs, number songs that will have movement, that will get your children dancing and marching to be able to be creative using their bodies in different ways. It's a great, great um, music that she has out there and you can get that on YouTube. Another one is Jack Hart. He does a lot of movement and music as well. Animals in action where they sing a song and they act like an animal and they go around the room. You can play it outside on your phone, too, if you don't want them doing it inside. He also has a lot of songs that he has movement to. Letters, numbers, rhyming, you name it, he has them. YouTube can be your friend when it comes to gaining ideas and activities for music and movement. We talked about outdoor play. Outdoor activities are important for children to learn and to develop their physical abilities as they grow older. Be creative. Like I said earlier, hopscotch, create your own rules. Catching lightning bugs, catching a ball, parks and playgrounds, red light, green light. Allow them to climb, balance, hang. There's a lot of benefits for outdoor play. Physical exercise, ultimate, is a great benefit for being outside. Being able to enjoy the outdoors, children have the opportunity to explore, to experiment, to manipulate, to reconfigure, to expand, to influence, to change, to marvel, to discover, to practice, to yell, sing, be creative act like scientists, ask questions, be curious. All of those uh, concepts happens when we're outside. Learning about the world around us enables our young children to learn a lot of things. And when they learn a lot of things, they can retain it, they can remember it because they can relate to it because they're in it. Learning about self and the environment helps children to um, learn about their own physical and emotional capabilities. Children can push their limits outside. The outdoor environment is a natural place for the self-discovery 
to take place. Release pent up energy. Oh my goodness, they can yell and scream and run and do all the movements that they need to do to get all that pent up energy out of them. It's a great healthy release and we all need it as well as there's health benefits too. It reduces the spread of infection, fresh air, exercise, and it also can address the growing problem of obesity in the United States. So providing opportunities for physical development. Everything that we discussed, please, please value the importance of fostering our physical development in our youngest learners. The best preparation for adulthood is to have a full and enjoyable childhood. I don't know about you, but when I think of my fondest mem memories in my childhood, it wasn't sitting on the couch watching TV. And remember, join in active play with your child, with your children. Give plenty of opportunities that encourage movement, whether it's indoor and outdoor. Focus on making sure that you're getting the fine motor skills as well as the large motor skills, because we all need that for development. Again, YouTube is a great source to get outdoor movement, music movement activities indoor at your fingertips and it doesn't cost a thing. The Early Childhood Office with H Sheet with Harford County Public Schools has a web web page. It's for parents. It's a great resource. You can go to WWH Harford County Public Schools HCPS.org and you can go to Early Childhood Education and there's abundance of resources for family and community support, mental, physical health, as well as education resources. If you have any questions, you can also always call the early childhood coordinator and she can answer them. Thank you for coming. Let's get moving. Remember, join in. It's important to foster our youngest learners when it comes to physical development. Enjoy your day, enjoy your evening, and thank you for participating.